Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthspan. Today we'll have a look at a study from a recent tweet by Dr. Sinclair. This is about a molecule which is one of the active ingredients in green tea. It's interesting because it's a long-term study which used reasonable doses on healthy animals and so is more easily translatable into human terms. First a disclaimer, that in this video we are sharing a study that we found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. Here is the tweet from Dr. Sinclair. Let's have a look at the paper that he is referring to. The title of the paper is The Phytochemical EGCG Extends Lifespan by Reducing Liver and Kidney Function Damage and Improving Age-Associated Inflammation and Oxidative Stress in Healthy Rats. Phytochemicals are just compounds from plants. EGCG, or epigalatocatechin gallate, is the most abundant catechin in green tea. The aim of the study was to see if long-term consumption of EGCG affected body growth, diseases, and lifespan of rats. It was a randomly controlled study with 68 rats. The key markers, such as blood pressure, serum glucose, etc., were measured throughout the experiment. They did see an increase in median lifespan from 92.5 weeks or 23 months to 105 weeks or 26.25 months. This is an increase in median lifespan of 14%. Blood pressure and serum glucose and lipids increased with age, but there was no significant differences between the two groups. Inflammation and oxidative stress significantly increased in both groups, but were lower for the liver and kidney in the treated group. The damage to the liver and kidney was significantly alleviated and the expression of NF-kappa-B, an inflammatory factor, was decreased along with the elevation of the expression of SIR1 and FOXO3A, two longevity-associated genes. In conclusion, they say that EGCG extends lifespan in healthy rats by reducing liver and kidney damage and improving inflammation and oxidative stress through the inhibition of NF-kappa-B which interacts downstream with FOXO3A and SIRT1. So let's have a look at the results that they saw. Here are the survival curves for the treated and control groups. The experiment stopped at week 108, which is why the graph stopped there. The median lifespan, when half the population is dead, is shown here. You can see that the treated group had an improvement from 92 to 105 weeks in median lifespan. They looked at body weight and food intake over the experiment. The body weight of the treated group was marginally lower than that of the control group, but did not reach a significant amount. They looked at blood pressure, heart rate, serum glucose, and lipids during the study as well. In summary, they say that there was no significant difference between the groups, and EGCG seemed not to affect these variables. They also looked at blood markers related to liver and kidney function. Specifically, the blood markers that are part of a normal blood panel, such as AST, ALT, and creatinine. Compared to the controls, most of these markers were lower for the treatment group. The divergence grew with the length of the study, with statistical significance developing over time, as shown here. This does show that EGCG does alleviate liver and kidney damage during the lifespan. When examining the liver and kidney of the animals after the experiment, they saw that the treated group were more healthy and had less damage than the controls. They looked at markers of inflammation in the serum and liver and kidney tissue. They found that these markers were lowered in both. These graphs show the level of interleukin-6 and TNF-alpha, two common inflammatory factors. We can see in both the liver and kidney that they are lower for the treated group. When looking in the liver and kidney tissue, they also saw an increase in the expression of SIRT1 and FOXO3A, which can inhibit the pro-aging inflammatory and oxidative stress effects of NF-kappa-B. Let's have a look at the dose that they chose and how it would translate to humans. They picked a dose of catechins of 50 milligrams per day based on a survey run in Holland. When converted for rats, this would be 5 mg per kilogram per day, assuming a 60 kg human. They started off with 5 mg per kilogram in the low-dose group 
and 25 milligrams per kilogram in the high dose group. However, they found that the five milligrams did not seem to have much effect. So what does this mean for humans? So they started off with 50 milligrams per day, which was calculated to be five milligrams per kilogram for rats. However, the effective dose was 25 milligrams per kilogram, which is five times the original dose. So converting back to humans, this would be 250 milligrams per day. To get this all from green tea would require about nine 100 milliliter cups. Though there are other sources of catechins as shown in this table. In conclusion, the study showed that EGCG significantly extended lifespan by reducing liver and kidney damage, which may have been achieved by the suppression of inflammation and oxidative stress through the inhibition of NF-kappa-B signaling and the activation of the longevity factors FOXO3A and SIRT1. Therefore, the study suggests that the long-term consumption of EGCG, like phytochemicals, could be beneficial in promoting health and extending lifespan. This looks interesting. As I mentioned earlier, it looks at the long-term effects in healthy animals with a dose which is achievable. It seems to have beneficial effects on the liver and kidney. I like green tea, but not sure that I want nine cups a day. So I'll have to top up my catechins with some of the other sources.